Good morning. How are we all doing? Well, it's wet and miserable in Matlock today. It's flipping horrible. <laughs> We've had some wet weather for the past few weeks now, and to be honest with you, I am totally sick of it now. <laughs> yeah, I should be looking forward to getting some sunshine whenever we can. Anyway, whilst it is wet and horrible today, I just thought I'd take this opportunity to put this video together. So do excuse me if I keep looking at my laptop. I've made lots of notes, so I will just be checking my notes to make sure that I cover everything that I want to say in this video. Okay, well, I recently and very proudly reached 7,000 subscribers, so thank you again to all of you for that. It's very much appreciated. Um, if you haven't subscribed, as I've said before, please do consider doing so. It doesn't cost anything, but it will help my channel to grow. Um, you. Yes, you. You've not subscribed. Click on that subscribe button now. Right, anyway, since reaching 7,000 subs, it was suggested to me that I do a Q&A video to mark the occasion. And as also this year is the 30th anniversary of the Solitaire Rambler, it does seem the right time to do this. Okay, so thank you so much to everyone again for all your questions. I actually received a lot more than I thought I would. Um, so apologies in advance, as I won't be able to answer everyone's question. Um, some of the questions were duplicated, and several people did actually ask more than one question. So I will be only answering one question per person. Okay, now, one thing I will say just before I do answer your questions. Do read the descriptions below the videos. Because a lot of the questions that people ask me will find the answers in the description below the video. Okay. Now, when you're watching a video, if you click below the video, you can see the description. And there are some general notes in that description. Uh, and a lot of the things that people have asked me can be found there. But I will go into more detail when I get answering some of the questions. And also, when you go onto my YouTube channel, um, on the home page, at the top here, um, there's some notes, and if you just click on the notes, it opens up another page about, and then again, you've got some notes which basically just give a general idea of what my channel is all about. So do check that out. Also, on the home page, um, below the notes, you've got a video, which is my trailer for the channel. Um, introduction to the Solitary Rambler. Now, even if you're not new to my channel, I do recommend watching that trailer because it's a four minute video which I made some years ago and again, it tells you a little bit about what my channel is all about. So, some of your answers will be in there. And just to sort of go over my channel briefly here, um, if you scroll down on the home page, you've got various playlists, you've got documentaries and behind the scenes information playlist. Now, in that playlist, you've got various videos that are made which are literally showing stuff behind the scenes. Most of these videos are made during lockdown where we weren't able to go out anywhere. Um, and I think people might find some of these videos interesting because there's various bits and bobs that I cover, but I'll go into more detail when I start answering the questions again. Okay, let's start answering the questions then. So the first question comes from HNM9695. Sorry, I don't know what your real name is. Um, anyway, HNM asks, could you tell us a bit about the equipment you use to make your films, please? Well, I use a Sony Handycam. I've always used Sony cameras ever since I started filming. I like Sony, and I suppose it's like anything. You stick with what you like. Um, I've never had any reason to change to anything else, so I've always used Sony. And um, yeah, I use a Sony Handycam. But if you look on my YouTube channel, Look under that documentaries and behind the scenes information playlist. Um, there's a video there called My Camera and Accessories. That was one of the videos I made in the first lockdown. And that will actually tell you a little bit about the kit I use for filmmaking. So do check that out. Thanks for your question. Next question is from Steph McGee. Hi Steph. She says, Hi Patrick. Could you please tell us your favourite place in the Peak District? Well, there are so many. The Peak District is such a large area and it's very varied, covering Derbyshire, Staffordshire, South and West Yorkshire, Cheshire, Greater Manchester and all within those counties it's very varied. 
But the first place I guess that springs to mind is Monsell Head. It's just a few miles up the road from me and it's a place I'll never get tired of. I can stand and look at the view, I'll never get tired of it. And whenever I get visitors, it's always a place that I'll take them. Um, but other places I like that certainly fall in Derbyshire, obviously Matlock where I live, I mean, whenever I have a pint in the Thorn Tree pub up the hill, particularly in summer when you can sit outside on the patio, you get wonderful views. And I look over the view of Matlock and the surrounding area and I think, yeah, I could be living in worse places. <laughs> but other places in Derbyshire that I love would be Lathkill Dale, Dovedale, I know that borders onto Staffordshire. Um, but you've also got the edges like Kerber Edge, Stanage Edge, um, and you've also got Derwent Edge. I mean, I think all those are lovely places. And if you go into South Yorkshire, I love the area around Strines. Um, and also I love Low Bradfield and High Bradfield. Those villages and the area around them, fantastic. Going into Staffordshire, um, I love the Manifold Valley. It's very similar to Dovedale, um, but it does get busy like Dovedale does, but not quite as busy. Um, but I think the Manifold Valley is fantastic. Places like where Wet and Mill Tea Rooms are, uh, and also Thor's Cave. Uh, and another few places in Staffordshire that spring to mind are the Roaches. I think the Roaches, they're probably my favourite edges in the Peak District. Just fantastic. And then you've got the Dane Valley, um, which borders onto Cheshire. But you've got places like Gradbatch, uh, and you've got Three Shires Head, where three counties meet. Love it all around there, so yeah, there's too many places to mention. But thanks for your question, Steph. Next question comes from Blue Sky. Hi Blue Sky, sorry again, I don't know what your name is. Um, but he asks, I'd be curious to know if you ever holiday or hike abroad. Well, I have been abroad, but I've never hiked abroad. Um, I had an uncle, sadly passed away now, um, who settled in Germany many years ago. Uh, and he met his wife um, and he had three children there. So I've still got cousins who live in Germany. Um, but I've not been for a long time. I used to go there a few times with family when my uncle was still alive. Um, but I remember going to one place in Germany not too far from where he lived, a place called Heidelberg. And that has to be the most fantastic place I think I've ever been to outside the UK. Um, I went to France once on a hypermarket trip. And that was a long time ago. Um, I remember sort of getting a boat from, uh, I think it's from Portsmouth we sailed, uh, and we went across to Normandy and just did a couple of days around Normandy uh, and then just went to this hypermarket shopping. <laughs> so that was a trip with family, but that's the only time I've been to France. Um, when I was in my early 20s, um, I went to Mallorca, that was with friends on, not it was a kind of one of those sort of boozy beach holiday things, but we did lie on the beach some days and have some beer in the evenings, but we did actually tour the island as well, so that was nice. Um, I remember the year after that I went to Corfu, Now Corfu was beautiful, however, I hated it there. <laughs> it was a holiday with, I went with a different friend, and the resort we stayed at was a place called Maratica. Um, and unfortunately, as soon as I arrived there, I just thought, I want to go home. I hated it, I didn't like it, because it was all young people. I mean, I was 23 at the time, so, you know, I still at that time used to go out weekends and, you know, go out and have drinks with friends, but it was just horrible. I just hated the atmosphere there, because it was all, just all young people, all there just for the booze and lying on the beach, and we didn't really explore the island when we were there. The guy I went with just wanted to spend his time on the beach, and I thought, I may as well have stayed at home for this. So I'm sure Corfu is fantastic if I'd gone with a different friend um, and not on one of those boozy beach holidays. So <laughs> another place I went to in more recent years was Malta. Um, that was actually with my mum, funnily enough, because mum, she won a competition in a magazine for a, a photo competition she did. And she got two free tickets to go to Malta. So she rang me up one day, she said, do you fancy a free trip to Malta? I said, yeah, all right then. <laughs> so that was nice. I mean. Again, I've been to Malta, I wouldn't want to go there again. The one thing I've found about Malta, hardly any green over there, no greenery. 
And that's what I like about the UK. It's green. You get all the different colours of the season, you know, the, the purple heather in, in season, you get like the autumn colours, um, and then the blossom that comes out in spring. Um, it just looked like a big quarry in Malta, I'm afraid. The only thing I liked about Malta was just trying the local food. But yeah, I wouldn't rush to go back to Malta. Um, and I think overall, I just like the UK too much. Um, anyway, thanks for your question. Next question is from Mr. Sweeper. That's Mike. Hi, Mike. Um, Mike asks, can you do a video on how you edit your films and what software you use? Thanks. Well, to be honest with you, Mike, I'm not sure that I want to make a video on how I edit my films because I know that would be quite a big project. I'm not against the idea, so maybe one day when I'm not doing any filming outdoors again. Um, who knows? But the video editing software I use is Pinnacle Studio. Thanks for your question. Next question comes from Tom Rawstern. Hi, Tom. He says, Hi, Patrick. Thanks for the opportunity to ask you a question. I often wonder how you monitor exactly where you are at points during your walks. Do you rely on the old-fashioned use of an ordnance survey map? Or do you use GPS aligned with the online ordnance survey maps you can use on a smartphone? Some of your routes look quite complicated and to walk, film and navigate all at once must be one heck of a challenge. Well, you're not far from the truth there, Tom. <laughs> um, I do use the OS Maps app on my phone when I'm out filming a walk. Um, I do keep a paper version with me because the battery on the phone does drain very quickly when you're using the app. Um, I always plot my routes before I go out um, because I'm spending a long day when I'm doing a day shoot. So what I don't want to be doing is spending more time having to work out if I'm on the right route. If I wasn't actually out filming and just walking without the camera and had more time, then using a paper map would be fine. Um, but when I am going out making a film of a walk, I just want to get on with the day shooting. Um, follow the route as easy as I can and then just not have to mess around with any other issues really. Thanks for your question, Tom. Next question is from Steve Ball. Hi Steve. Steve says, Hi Patrick, like you, I use the OS app to plot and follow routes, but always carry a paper map just in case. My question is, how far ahead are you planning your walks? Well, I plan most of my routes way in advance. Um, some of them can be months, some can be even years. Um, this is how I've actually managed to create a huge long list of places for myself that I want to go and film. <laughs> anyway, if you take a look on my YouTube channel and look under the documentaries and behind the scenes information playlist, there's a film there called Deciding Where to Film, which I made in 2020. And that gives a bit of background as to how I planned how and where I would be making my films up to that time. So you may find that answers your question. Thanks for your question, Steve. Next question is from Mr. Steve, MG. Hi, Steve. Um, Steve says, morning, Patrick. I usually use Google Earth alongside your videos to try and follow the walks. I was wondering if you could produce a basic route map of each walk, parking included, for those of us who wish to try them for ourselves. Maybe something we could print out and put in our pockets to follow? Well, this goes back to what I was really saying at the very start. If you read the descriptions below the videos, your questions are answered there. If you look at the description below the video, you'll find when you scroll down, there's a link to a map of the route. I can't provide parking info, I'm afraid. Um, one thing that I have stated, which is also in the video descriptions, um, it's also on my website and in my channel trailer, the introduction to the Solid Rambler, but my films are not made as guides, even though I do provide a lot of information in them. Um, the reason I provide links to the route maps is because I know they might be helpful to people, um, but they are the routes that I've plotted for myself in the first place before I go out and film the walk, so hope that answers your question. Thanks, Steve. Next question is from PK. Hi PK. Um, he says, Hi, have you ever quit a walk you were filming without finishing it, or been too exhausted to complete a walk? Always my personal big fear. Well, I've not actually quit a walk as such, but there have been a few instances where I have been really exhausted before finishing the walk. 
Um, this is one of the reasons I try not to walk a long route when I'm filming. Now normally I like to do a walk that's about five or six miles on average um, because that's a comfortable length to film. Um, however, during the summer months earlier this year, I did do some longer walks that were between 8 and 11 miles. Um, those are the ones I did around Kinder Scout, Bleak Low, Black Hill. Um, but that's because I knew we had longer days. So I knew there would be less pressure on me to finish the walk before it got dark. But no, I don't think there's actually ever been a case where I've given up and, and just quit a walk as such. So hope that answers your question. Thanks. Next question is from Peter Zelmanis. Hi Peter. Sorry, I hope I've pronounced your surname correctly there. <laughs> um, so Peter asks, what's your favourite pints, Patrick? So I know what to buy you if I see you in the pub. <laughs> well, I'm a member of Camera, the campaign for real ale, so I do like good beer. Um, I like all sorts, really. Um, I tend to go for pale ales. Um, on the odd occasion when I go out with a friend, I go out with a friend of mine once every week, perhaps once every fortnight. I don't drink much, to be fair. But when I see him, we usually have four pints, and we like to try a different one. So we might start off with a pale ale, then go on to what, a cooking beer, if you like, uh, try a darker one, and, and usually try a stout as well. So we like to try different ones. But my favourite is Thornbridge Jaipur. I love it. Um, it's a very strong beer, but it's it's the taste of it is lovely, but you just wouldn't want to drink too much of it. I also like um, I like the Abbeydale Brewery stuff as well, like Absolution, that's nice, Sheffield Brewery. So, so yeah, it's mainly the pale ales I like though. Well, thanks for your question. Now my next question comes from a fellow YouTuber, Chris Bentley, Walking and Rambling. Hi Chris. Now I have given Chris's channel a shout out before now, um, but I will leave a link to his channel in the description below this video. <laughs> and I'll do the same for other YouTubers that have also asked me questions today. So one of the questions that Chris has asked is, which video are you most proud of? Thank you for making YouTube a brighter place, Patrick. Well, thanks for that, Chris. That's really nice. Um, I actually did a top 10 of my own films, um, another video I made during lockdown. So that can be found if you look under my documentaries and behind the scenes information playlist. However, I have since made another 100 or so films. So I think videos since that time that I would be proud of, probably the ones that spring to mind, are the ones I did around Matlock in late 2020 and early 2021. Not because I live here, but I just feel that I made good films that I look back on and I'm proud of. Particularly the one I did around Lumsdale Falls and the one I did around Bonsall. Um, but one or two others that spring to mind would be my Fair Homes and Derwent Edge film and also my Park House Hill and Chrome Hill film. Um, also, I think two films that spring to mind are the two I made in Sherwood Forest last year. Now, in my top ten video that I made during lockdown, I did say that it's not the locations, it's the quality of the films themselves that make me proud. So that's the reason that I'm happy with the ones I've just mentioned. So thanks for your question, Chris. Next question comes from Shane Dallas Taylor. Hi Shane. She says, Hi Patrick, which is the best walk to do? I fancy doing Mam Tor. What is it like to do? Well, that's a difficult question to answer, really, Shane. I mean, it all depends on personal taste. How far you want to walk? Do you want to do any climbing? Do you want to avoid hills? Do you just want to do a, a low level walk? Do you want to go to places that are quieter or busier places? Um, I mean, Mam Tor, I mean, that's a fantastic walk to do. I'd recommend that to anyone, but it always gets busy. I think you'd be very difficult to find a time where you're not going to get lots of people up there. Uh, but no, I recommend that walk wholeheartedly. So. Thanks for your question, Shane.